Hey, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering. Great to be back with you again. Today, we're going to take you on a room tour with a difference. Check this out though. This is a shocker. Okay, before we head into the room, I want to explain a few things. A while ago, I did a rant about so-called professionals providing home cinemas to, to customers, but doing a really shocking job. At the time, we were getting about one call a month. We're now getting about four calls a month from people stuck in that position. Only the other day, I went out to a guy to do a calibration for him only to find out that he's had his home theater for a year. Uh, it's a 4K HDR installation, but he's only ever had HD uh, standard definition um, and standard dynamic range images. The shop has agreed to change the cable, but they won't install it. They've just said, right, you know, here's another cable, you've got to give us the other one back and that's it. We're not going to actually fix the problem. So he's still stuck with it and he's now going to work out what he's going to do and who he's going to pay to get it fixed. Hopefully we'll be able to help him out and get it all solved. This is happening way too often, folks. And the problem is most customers actually don't know what they're missing out on until someone points it out. What you're about to see is one of those circumstances, but this guy spent over $100,000, right? He thought he'd had the room professionally designed. He thought he had a great result, but it always niggled him. It always worried him because he didn't think that really it was performing the way it should until an associate of ours went out there and said, you guys need to talk to Home Theatre Engineering. We went out there and check out what we found. I'm out on site now having a look at this home theatre and look, the guys put so much effort into this room only to have a really horrendous job done by the suppliers. So I'm just going to go through this room and we're going to have a look at the way it is at the moment. Now we've just taken the screen off, that's lying against the side wall but it's a nice big anamorphic screen and really you know no expense has been spared on this room but I'm going to show you some of the things that have gone on. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around and we'll have a look. Okay so first of all obviously as far as the decor goes, this guy's done an amazing job in making this place look like a good old classic cinema. He's got a candy bar, you know, he's got great cinema seats, he's got uh, the um, columns with the features on them, he's got the, um, the chandelier type lighting, um, there's a uh, projector up the top there, uh, the ceiling features are amazing, I mean this place is incredible, right? And uh, he's called on people to build his uh, cinema and they have done an absolutely woeful job and let's talk about why. Well first of all let's have a look at where your surround speakers are. If you're sitting here your surround speakers should be somewhere over there. Now bearing in mind yes he's got a candy bar there but he started on the cinema design before he started on the interior design so there was no reason they couldn't go there. But there aren't any surround speakers there and there aren't any surround speakers there there's curtain and there's brick wall behind, so there's no reason there couldn't be a speaker there. His surround speakers, it looks like, are in the ceiling. And hopefully they're not Atmos because then we've got surround and Atmos. And then his rear surrounds are up in the top left-hand corners. Um, so nothing's where it belongs at all. Um, okay, so, well, that sucks. Uh, so let's move to the front here. Oh, look at this. Um, when we were listening to a movie initially, I couldn't work out why all the sound was coming from the centre. And now we know. If you have a look, we have these um, speakers all stacked pretty much side by side. So the total image width is about 1.5 metres, maybe, maybe 2 metres max. Uh, and yet the subwoofers are the, are the limits of the screen. So he has no sound stage whatsoever. It just has collapsed right into the middle. This left speaker here should be over here, this right speaker here should be way over here, and the subs should be placed, you know, obviously in the best situation that we can get them for the room. Um, so the sound in here is terrible. Also, uh, they are so close to the screen. This is a micro per screen, not a woven screen. So we're also getting all of the comb filtering that comes from uh, installing this incorrectly. Uh, now, including automation, this guy spent over $100,000 and he's got a, a performance that is, is very, very substandard. Not to mention at the moment when I came in, the image didn't fit the screen properly. The aspect ratios are not correct. Um, and, um, you know, so I would suspect the, the projector settings are not right. And the other thing is, uh, no one has spoken to him about an anamorphic lens either. So 
um, you know, the, the good thing is that there's a lot we can do in this room to, to really lift it and to make it sound and look uh, so much better in terms of image quality. So uh, that's about it. I've just finished off in this room, at least as best as I can in the day and the time that I've got. So I thought I'd give you a quick run around and show you what we've done. Now, a lot of the work is now hidden, of course, but uh, I'll take you through and uh, let's see what we got up to. So I'll just reverse the camera and we're off. Okay, so first of all, behind the screen here, there were three speakers and they were basically side by side. The LCRs were not, you know, spaced out to the uh, ideal uh, angle for the speakers. And it also meant we had a clapped soundstage. So what we've done here, and I, I, I don't want to take the screen off again, we've raised the speakers up so the tweeters are at ear level. We've spaced the speakers out so we've got sound stage. We've moved the speakers back because this is a perforated screen. And uh, we've uh, relocated the subwoofers. So the sound from the sound stage or well, the speakers at the front is now much, much, much better. It's un an unbelievable difference, actually. All right, coming around here, you can see in the ceiling, uh, these were two Atmos speakers. Now, if you look at where they are in relationship to the seats, you can see that they were never going to work. So the first Atmos speaker is um, uh, just here, over there, and the second one's there. So there's no real front Atmos. So what you've got a centre and a rear Atmos, but the rear Atmos isn't even behind the rear seats. So you, the Atmos are entirely in the wrong location. And also, Atmos should ideally be lined up with the left and right, or close to, um, but these are way over here, um, miles out, out of alignment. So um, the, the Atmos speakers were really not much use. So what I've done is, because this speaker, and I'll just move back again, sorry, it's a bit bumpy and all over the place, but okay, because this is pretty much in line with the seats, I've retasked that speaker because he's got no left and right surrounds at all. So I've retasked that as a right hand uh, surround speaker. Not ideal, it's in the ceiling, we, we wouldn't have done that, but hey, you know, and here's the left hand surround speaker now. So now he has left and right surrounds. These speakers that were at the rear, so just to try and give you an idea of where they are in the room, the speakers at the rear, We've got nothing else to work with, so they have now become the rear surround. So we now have left and right surround, rear surrounds. Not perfect, but, you know. And then the jumbers on these hadn't even been properly connected, so we were either listening only to the mid-range or the tweeters. That's left two speakers in the ceiling, which um, I thought, well, we've got them there, so we, we can't move them at the moment. So they've been retasked as middle Atmos. So now... Um, you know, whilst it's not perfect, that's what we've done. Then we come to the screen. Now, <clears throat> the settings in the projector were all wrong. We had um, uh, some anamorphic settings that have been put in. You do not use anamorphic settings with, uh, with zoom. You simply zoom the image out and you use the full chip and you don't stretch or distort the image. Um, the other thing was the brightness contrast levels were wrong. There had been no calibration. Um, so I had to reset the image position, both for 16 by 9 anamorphic, so anamorphic. The blanking had been turned on, so um, I understand why they do that, but it actually doesn't work very well because um, it can create problems with viewing menus and also it causes people to uh, set up the, uh, the projector incorrectly as well. So just, just don't use blanking. Um, okay, uh, so speakers sorted at the front. Um, of oh, the subwoofer, there's a subwoofer um, amp in here. Uh, you can't see much of it there, but the settings on that were incorrect. Uh, the surround settings on the amplifier were incorrect. The levels were incorrect. The distances were incorrect. Um, so all of those has been corrected. And what we've got now, uh, and I had the client come in earlier, is a really nice nicely formed surround field so we listened to um, a couple of uh, test tracks that we use um, some movies and um, finally he's got surround sound actually happening to his left to his right and to his rear a little bit of atmos coming in and nicely formed and clear vocals now we don't have the comb filtering behind the screen one of the big issues is the projector is the wrong projector for the screen this is a sony vpl vw 360 es this is a 150 inch screen and he's running hdr so he's running 4k hdr we are getting uh, 36 uh, candelas per meter squared on this that is not really enough even to do rec 709 properly 
Uh, now I've tried to extract what I can out of the projector, but that's not easy. And uh, we are nowhere near being able to produce a nice HDR image on this screen. He really needs to be punching, you know, um, up to about 100 nit level to be able to really uh, get that sort of definitive HDR feel about the, the picture. And at 1500 lumens, I mean, who would specify a 1500 lumen projector on a 150 inch anamorphic screen? That's just nuts. So, you know, uh, who, whoever put this together obviously didn't do their maths, but we've done the best we can with it. We might have to look at, you know, options for the screen. An anamorphic lens would help a bit. It would lift the, the light output because we are using all of the chip then but it seems more of a patch job. Really, the projector needs to be changed and then you could look at using an anamorphic lens perhaps. But look, what we've done in here is we have turned a, an atrocious room, um, very badly designed, very badly installed, very badly set up room. And uh, we've now got decent surround, half decent image um, and some good clarity. Uh, and you know the client's very very happy I mean it, there's been a terrific leap it's taken about sort of seven hours to do it but uh, certainly happy with the outcome so there you go that's really what's happened in this process of taking a room from a, from a bad design and install to trying to do the best we can with it within limitations we can't rewire we can't add speakers at the moment so nothing in that sense is going to change we've just done the best we can with what's here thanks folks and hope uh, hope that's been worthwhile uh, one last look at the room. There you go. Okay, so that was a brief tour of the room. And, you know, uh, it shows some of the things that we had to do to try and improve it. Unfortunately, because of the way the room was constructed underground um, with uh, solid walls um, on most of the sides, there wasn't a lot that we could do. Cabling was going to be very difficult. Uh, there were a lot of restrictions. And that's part of the frustration because the room, as we said, was built around the original design given to him by, by the store. However, we have improved it. And I think ultimately what he'll end up doing is upgrading the projector so that he gets great HDR. And, uh, you know, we can sort of give him the right advice and help him through. Take care. I look forward to talking to you soon.